we were talking about photo LOD and photo layout. So we are saying how photo layout works and what are the different types like a PN junction photo layout or a PIN photo layout or else avalanche photo layout. Now there are uh, different ways of operating in a photo layout. So we told that if you use just the external voltage, then you get very minimal current and we defined it as dark current. Okay, dark, D-A-R-K. And if light is there, in addition, if you have light, then you will get more amount of current, the entire process happening. Uh, light falls onto the depletion region. It comes towards a valence band. Valence electrons gain energy from the light, go towards the conduction band, become free electrons. But at the same time, they have produced some holes. So these newly produced holes and electrons will uh, uh, create the current or generate the current they start flowing and they generate the current now if I operate in that way of where I have an applied voltage along with the light coming into picture then I call it as a photo conductive mode okay photo conductive mode that means there is the photo current the, that is the current generated due to the light and also the dark current that is uh, which is due to the applied voltage okay now if I don't have an applied voltage I don't apply an external voltage okay uh, Shravan can you please switch off your video I am already struggling with the internet nice to see your background and all please please switch off your video guys let's save the bandwidth okay all right so now uh, uh, the photovoltaic mode is when you don't apply an external voltage, but the diode works, the photodiode works because of the light which is falling on it. Okay, we will quickly see, we'll come into an application of how this thing works. This first case, photovoltaic. Whatever we discussed last class is the photoconducting mode. Okay, now this is just the IV characteristics. IV characteristics means you know what current versus voltage, right? Now this is working in reverse bias condition. So for that reason, all the values will be here in the third quadrant, right? So I'm increasing the uh, voltage, I'm increasing the voltage, the current is very minimal initially, it's a small increase and then it becomes constant. Obviously the major portion of the current is due to the external light which is falling on it, not just the applied voltage. Now I want you to notice three things here. I've taken, uh, what I've done is, if I do actually in reverse bias, it should be only in the third quadrant. I have extended it to the first quadrant. I extend this graph to first quadrant. Now you'll be thinking why there are three graphs. Why can't I be happy with just one graph? The reason is this. This is when you have, uh, say, no light. So there is a minimal current, which is the minimal dark current, which is flowing. Okay, this is when there is no light. Now, this case where G1 I have mentioned, that means I have, say, applied some light of some particular intensity. Say, for an example, let's take, say, something with a power of 10 milliwatt. Okay, this is for that. Now, I increase the intensity of the light. I get more current. So, suppose this is 20 milliwatt. This is for higher intensity. And then this is... The G3, which you're saying is for more higher intensity, that means around 30 milliwatt. So this was zero milliwatt power of the light, the external light which is falling. That means no light at all. And then you have 10 milliwatt, then 20 milliwatt, 30 milliwatt. I'm just giving you an example of how, how much the intensity varies. So as the intensity increases, current also increases. So when more light, more light falls means more uh, photons are falling on it, that means more absorption by the valence electrons, more valence electrons can go to the connection band and become free electrons, more holes will be produced, so more current is being produced. So as you increase the intensity in a photodiode, more current is being produced. Now, I want you to notice these yellow circles which I have put here. So you can see here, there is a fixed value of current, okay, IP1, IP2, IP3 I have mentioned, but the voltage here is actually zero. You can see it is coinciding at the zero, right? Voltage is zero, but there is a fixed value of current. This is known as short circuit current. This value is known as short circuit current. Now come to this when where I extended the graph to 
first quadrant, what happened? I get the same three graphs touching the voltage axis. Okay, I get different values of voltage, but current is zero. So this is known as open circuit voltage. Short circuit current when voltage is zero and open circuit voltage when current is zero. The value of voltage when current is zero in a photodiode is known as open circuit voltage. You will need these terms as we go ahead with photodiode. Uh, okay, I had given you these examples that day. Uh, these are the different uh, materials which combine together producers makes a photodiode. And then uh, three important parameters which you need to know about the photodiode. One is responsivity. What does it mean? I know that there is some light falling onto it, light of some particular intensity or some power falling onto it, and it is producing some current. If I take a ratio of the current produced or the current generated due to that amount of light which is incident, ratio of current generated to the amount of light which is incident, I will call it as responsivity. Basically, how much does the photodiode respond? Let me just uh, say in a simple way. I scold you, obviously you get angry. If I don't scold you, you will be happy, right? So the more the intensity of my scolding, the more angry you get. So that's just, just for fun, sorry. <laughs> so responsivity is when you have, as you increase the light, more current is being produced. So how is the diode responding for more increase in light? That means the current produced by the amount of light incident. Okay, that is responsivity. In a similar way, I can define something else known as quantum efficiency. Quantum means some amount, some discrete amount, right? So when I say that light is incident on a photodiode, basically it means there are some photons which are incident. Light obviously consists of photons. So there are some photons which are falling. And when I say that light produces current, that means it is actually producing some charge carriers, electron hole pairs, right? For every valence electron which goes to the connection band, there is a hole which is being produced. So there is a pair of electron hole, right? There's a charge carrier pair which is being produced. So the ratio of how many charge carrier pairs are produced, that means electron hole pairs are being produced with respect to how many photons have been incident. How many charge carriers are produced with respect to how many photons are incident, that is known as quantum efficiency. Now, one more thing, just a simple word, response time, basically how long, like if light is incident, how long does the charge carriers are able to, how long it takes for the charge carriers to uh, move across uh, uh, from valence band to conduction band and produce the current, how long it, it takes, how long it consumes, that is response time. Application wise, there are so many applications. So you have compact CD players, compact disc players, you can say CD players or smoke detectors, and then some medical applications, uh, obviously in optical communications, because wherever you need, wherever you get only less light and how if you can generate some current and apply it for something, then that is uh, very much useful. Well,